Hello crafty friends, it's Alicia of the Call Me Crafty Owl YouTube channel and I am back today to share with you how I made my desktop note center for a recent collaboration video. And I'll also be letting you know how you can download the calendar printable for free. I hope you'll stick around and find out more. Thank you so much for stopping by today. If this is your first time to my channel and you're going to want to download the printable for free, make sure to click on that subscribe button below and ring that bell for notifications. If you're already a subscriber and regular viewer, welcome back. I'm so glad that you're here again. Last week, as part of the Crafty Christmas Collab 2020, hosted by Beth of Bourbon Creek Crafts here on YouTube, I shared with you a desktop note center that I created using a 5x7 frame from the Dollar Tree. I let you know at that time that I would be coming back with a tutorial and a free printable. Sorry that I've gotten a little bit delayed, but that No Spend November crept up on me and I had to get those videos ready, so all of them are posted by this Friday. Now, if you don't know about my No Spend November giveaway and challenge series, make sure to check out the introduction video. I let you know how you can play along and what you can win for the prize. And let me tell you, it's a good one. That video will be linked in the description box below. This would make a quick, easy, economical gift to give to a host or hostess. I know we're not really out amongst a lot of people right now. It could be for a coworker, a friend, a family member. It could be sat on a desk to use for notes. It could be in a kitchen just so you have a quick place to write something and see what the date is. The possibilities are endless and it's super easy to make. This probably took me less than 10 minutes and half of that might have been cutting the calendars and getting those stapled together. One of the things I suggested in that original video was that if you gave this as a gift, you could give different 5x7s decorated for different either months or seasons of the upcoming year. That way, when the recipient tears off, you know, maybe till March or April, they're not still looking at a Christmas background. And speaking of April, I went ahead and made a quick, easy example of one of the cards you might be able to give so they could switch it out. So I created this quick and easy five by seven, seriously took one minute, that could just be switched out for the new holiday. The background paper for this 5x7 is actually part of one of those pages in a hot buy pad that a lot of us card makers might not use because it's meant more for scrapbooking. It just has this one image on that whole page. But this made a quick, easy way to just cut up a 5x7 card. And then this bunny trail was part of a border strip page that I just cut out and adhered down. I think you can see it would be super simple to just make a whole year worth of these using pattern paper that you already have that could fit different seasons. Today I'm going to go ahead and show you how to make one from scratch, but I'm not going to make this one seasonal. It will just be all purpose so the recipient or yourself could just use that same background all year long. As I start the process, I will go to a voiceover. If I leave you with any questions, make sure to leave those in the comment section below and I'll get back to you just as soon as I can. Let's get crafty. A couple notes on the printable. First of all, I will tell you at the end of this video how to download it. But secondly, it's very important when you do download it that you print this file at 100%. Do not scale it at all to fit the margins of your printer. I have set it up so there's a quarter of an inch border all the way around the calendars. So this really should be compatible with most printers out there. So again, make sure you print it at full size, 100%, no scaling. 
And again, a couple little notes on the frame. I do get the five by seven horizontal display frame. This means that bottom part goes across the long edge. And this is gonna be how it sits on the desk like I had originally intended. Now, if yours sits on the short end, you could use that as well. You might just wanna put the calendar on top of where the post-it note goes. Each frame should come with a protective film on it. This just keeps it from getting damaged before it makes it to your house. That was one of the hardest parts was trying to pull that film off actually. Now at my Dollar Tree, the one closest to me ran out and the one I did end up finding some at, they were kind of buried all the way at the bottom. So make sure you check that frame section out really carefully. Now, if yours doesn't have it and you're going to plan on making a lot of these, you can buy it online and pick it up at your local store, but I think you have to buy 24 at a time. Also from the Dollar Tree are their sticky notes. You get these in a package of five for only a dollar. I am using the Home Again collection from Echo Park for all of my decorating today. I got out the sticker sheet, one of the cut aparts, a floral kind of leafy pattern for the background, and then a scrap of wood grain. I start by cutting a five by seven piece from that leafy pattern paper, and this will be the base for all of my decorating. Next, I chose one of the cut apart pieces and cut that out from the rest of the page. I just thought this was a simple card that I could add that calendar below and still have some decoration. To help this card stick out a little bit from that floral background, I brought in that scrap of wood grain paper and I cut it down so there was an eighth of an inch border all the way around the card. Before I start assembling my card for the frame, I brought in a scrap of white cardstock and I cut two pieces. One was the same size that the calendar will be, which is three and a half by two. And the second piece I cut down to the same size as the post-it note. This way I kind of have placeholders for where those pieces will go later so I can arrange all of the elements on that five by seven piece. Now it's time to cut down the calendars. And again, make sure that you print this at 100%. Now on the screen at the bottom of this printable is going to be some text about how it gets cut and the fact that I'm giving it to you free for personal use. Most printers are going to cut this off just like mine did so it's no longer on there. I set these calendars up so there was a quarter inch border all the way around and then all of the calendars were smooshed together and once you cut off the outside, you can then just cut them down to the final business card size of three and a half inches wide by two inches tall. So I'm gonna start by cutting that quarter inch off all edges of this piece of paper. Now, some of you might want to print these calendars on cardstock, but I would advise against it just because you do have to staple these together later. Now that those edges are cut off, it's time to cut down the individual calendars. The first thing I do is cut this piece into three strips that are three and a half inches wide. Once those are cut down, I then stack these on top of each other and cut them into two inch tall pieces. I will be using the line to the left of my cut line and I make sure that every time I move this stack of papers that I hold them tightly so they stay lined up. Once they're all cut down to size, it's then time to put them in order by month. Once these are put in order, it's time to get the stack stapled together. Now for my calendar today, I'm gonna to be using my long arm stapler. This comes from Amazon and really isn't too bad of a price. I bought this because I was doing some traveler's notebooks and items where I needed to be able to staple the center of pieces, but it is also more of a heavy duty stapler. When I did my original desktop note center, I used a standard stapler, which did work. I had to redo the staples a couple times because they didn't go through. But if you take your time and press hard, a standard stapler will work for this. But I will tell you that using this long arm stapler today, the staples went through like butter and they looked so nice. 
Now that all of the pieces are ready, it's time to start decorating the 5x7. You almost treat this as kind of like a scrapbook page if you're a scrapbooker. And I use those white pieces of cardstock as placeholders for where my quote photos would go. But in this case, it is a calendar and a post-it note. Once I had that cut apart matted with the wood grain, I played a little bit with the layout on the 5x7 card, deciding where I should hit here down that home piece. I added adhesive to the back of it and placed it on the 5x7 card, so later when I adhere the calendar to the front of the frame, everything looks nice and centered. Next, I got out the sticker sheet and I played around a little bit with some of the elements and stickers from there, but I decided to go ahead and use that border strip at the bottom. I liked the sentiment and the fact that that wood grain background matched the mat on my home card. I pulled that off there and then I decided that I would chop up the sentiment and place it above where the post-it note would go. I cut the sentiment into four pieces where I thought natural breaks in the saying could go and once that was done I did want to make sure that when I adhered it it was placed correctly so it wouldn't get covered up by the post-it note. So I put some adhesive just in the back center of my placeholder for that and I detacked that with my finger so when I go to pull it up later it won't ruin anything. I started placing my sentiment by placing the first and last pieces first. This way I had even borders on the top and bottom of those and I could place those final pieces so the spacing in between was also even. Once I liked the layout of those I went ahead and pressed that down so it would stick in place nicely. Now it's time to get the card put in the frame. I remove the piece of paper that came in it and then the frame gets turned around so when it sits on the desk you can write nicely on it. I slid in my decorated 5x7 card and then it's time to get the calendar and the post-it note put on there. For the calendar it will get tugged on a little bit when the recipient needs to pull off the next month. So I decided to put a lot of adhesive on the back of this. I basically covered the entire back with that ATG. I did place it kind of carefully onto the front of the frame and then when it was in the place I liked it I pressed down harder. For the post-it note you have a couple different options. I did remove the back, the white piece that came on it. You could just place this right onto the frame and not worry about adding any extra adhesive. But if you're worried that it might fall off later, you could always add some extra adhesive yourself. Now if you're going to provide the recipient with extra post-it note pads in case they run out, this might want to be a step that you skip. Wasn't this so quick and easy to make? Now I hope that you're going to want to make your own. If you're going to, go ahead and give this video a thumbs up. And here's how you're going to download the free printable file. First of all, I am providing this for free to my subscribers for your personal use only. Please do not resell the file, share it with other people who might not be subscribers, or make stuff and sell it. If you do want to make stuff to sell it, please contact me and we can work something out so you can use that. Just like with sheet load, we are going to go on the honor system that you are a subscriber to my channel. But please, if you're not already subscribed and you're going to download this file, just click on that button. It's totally free for you. All the way at the bottom of the description box below is a link to a password protected PDF. The password protected part is new for my channel. I just want to make sure that those of you who are taking the time to watch my videos are the ones who are downloading the files. Now the password for this file is also located at the bottom of the description box below, but I'm going to pop it up on screen and just tell you now so you also know it. It is capital C M C A 2021 C A L. Only that very first letter is capitalized, so make sure that is the only one you do when you enter the password, and then you should be able to download it and or print it. That is up to you. Now, just like I mentioned earlier in the video, make sure you print it at 100% so it doesn't scale or shrink on your printer. 
I would love to know below who you're going to make your desktop center for. Until my next video, I hope you're all having a crafty day. Bye-bye. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch all the way to the end of the video. I hope now you'll consider clicking on one of the videos or playlists I have linked above. And if you're interested in any of the products or tools I used in today's video, I do have some links in the description box.